Good morning, everyone. Selamat pagi semua. Uh, I was actually planning on doing this in Bahasa Melayu, but because I come all the way from Sabah, so my my dialect, my Sabah dialect, you might not know. You will hear Bah everywhere. So I'll stick to Mal uh, English. But if you have any questions and you would like to ask me in Malay, even in this uh, on this stage, please feel free to ask. Right? So let's start uh, a little bit about myself. This year should be my 20th anniversary of doing web development, building on the web. So in the, uh, uh, the web is actually my first love, of, uh, among everything, after my kids. The web is um, uh, the best. Uh, I love the web because I can build anything on it. I can solve anything on the web. I can search anything on the web. I can learn everything on the web. So it has stuck with me for a long time. And WordPress came into my life about 10 years ago. I, I was trying to build my own blog and not rely on any other third party like blogger. And I'm a self-taught programmer. Who here can code? Yes, very good, very good. Who here does not code with PHP? Oh, no! OK, I'll be talking a lot about PHP. Uh, I have background in Node.js, which is server-side JavaScript. But uh, if you ask me on, a little bit on Python, but do not ask me anything on Ruby or anything else. So, uh, any reference to the codes here will be reference uh, based on PHP standards. I've been uh, self-taught. Uh, uh, I taught myself programming, but actually I did end up having a first job as a webmaster back in Sabah. So, uh, there's a lot of um, things I love about WordPress, but most of all, it's the plug and play factor that comes in. I didn't realize that at that time, <coughs> WordPress would become one, uh, uh, one of the most powerful tools that you can use if you want to improve your search engine optimization. So uh, on top of having a very low learning curve, it also has a very high potential for you as a non-programmer but would like to go into technical things and learn about technical parts of web development. WordPress would be a very easy doorway for you to learn. This is a snapshot of my profile at wordpress.org. So as you can see, I, I built two plugins which I hosted in wordpress.org. I'd like to call myself as more of a back-end developer rather than a full stack or front-end developer because design-wise, I am hopeless. I cannot design. If you want me to combine the best colors of this and that or whatever images, I'm hopeless at that. But if you want me to optimize your website, make it faster, I can help you with that. I love debugging. I like, I like solving this. Uh, I also actually contribute to WordPress.org in the uh, translation from English to BM. So if you are using WordPress.org uh, translation, the, the pod files, to create websites uh, that actually uses text in Malay, so I'm part of the team. Okay. I hope that tomorrow, when I hope tomorrow you join the contribute, uh, contributor day, although I won't be there because I, I had to leave early, but please join in the contributor day because one of the things that we need help with is the translation from English to Malay. Right, a lot of these things you actually can learn from Google. So I'll, I'll be always like um, back and forth going through WordPress developer resource. Last time WordPress developer resources uh, were, was known as the WordPress Codex. For those of you who have worked on WordPress for uh, a long time, 
they renamed it recently. So they have like the developer resource and then they have the team resources. If you want to learn how to get started, the resources section has been improved lots. So there's a lot of tutorial there. You can even find video tutorials on how to start creating your first theme. So actual fact is you only need two files. Today we'll be learning three files. I, I, I say um, as simple and using three files because there's another file that I will mention later on, which is functions.php. So it plays a lot of uh, uh, a big factor in kind of simplifying your work as a developer. Okay, the simple theme that I mentioned in my title is actually a clickbait title. It's not really simple. To create a theme is not really simple. It's a, in a way it is, but after that, um, it takes a lot of your right brain to work. Anyway, going back to this, you will notice that you need only two files, which is one PHP file and one stylesheet file, CSS file. That's all you need. The CSL, CSS file, even though practically if you want to build a one page WordPress, you can. However, in terms of reading the metadata of the themes, like what is the name of this theme? What is the description of this theme? What is the screenshot and all those things? You will need to put it in the styles.css. Style.css. You need to put all this metadata inside there. So you cannot escape from having a separate CSS and PHP. I mention this because if later on you follow the uh, another track for progressive web apps, and even if you are learning about another web technology called uh, Accelerated Mobile Pages, M, you will notice that the standards now is that you need to combine all these JavaScript files, <coughs> CSS files, and whatever HTML files or PHP files that you have there. That was the what, what's recommended by the standards for AMP and then progressive web apps as well. There are benefits to combining your files. One of it would be if you are a web developer now and you are struggling to learn how to build mobile apps, that would make your transition from a web developer into a mobile app developer easier. Who here is struggling? Who, is, who here is still trying to build your first mobile app and is still struggling? How, how, how's the technology? Is it the same, the, the way you build an app versus the way you build a website? It's totally crazy. It's, it's like you, you, you learn something different. So you feel, I as a web developer actually felt a bit um, frustrated and felt like oh, all these 20 years of learning web development and I, now mobile, mobile development is a trend. And how do I learn? Thankfully, with uh, te uh, new technologies like um, Ionic where, and other hybrid, they call it hybrid app, you can actually now build apps using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So uh, hopefully, whatever that you learn now is more portable. Okay? You cannot. Uh, it cannot run away from mobile development anymore. Okay, it's actually, if you look at the market trend for web developer, the demand for web developers in the job market, it's actually going down. Going down. I, I, I cannot show you the statistics, but the statistics, I got it from Google. Uh, and that was in 2015. So it's definitely going downwards continuously. So hopefully, once you learn how to combine all your PHP files, CSS files, and even JavaScript files, you should be able to move over to mobile app development soon. We can talk about it later on in the happiness um, room. 
and after this. The, the examples that I'm going to show would be three files. Of course, the standard and most recommended way of building PH, uh, WordPress themes would be in the modular way. That means you separate your header, you separate your footer, you separate your archives, you separate your single post, and so on and so forth. Why? It's in a, in a way, in the long term, what's told to us is that it's going to be easy for developers to edit, to change. So uh, the conflicts will be less when there are more developers coming in in the long term. But truthfully, truthfully, for people like myself as freelancers or solopreneurs who build, develop, who develop websites by ourselves and we don't have any other partners, partner developers, you know your stuff. You build your stuff. And to, to have to manage so many files would be very, very cumbersome and tracking it would be a big bother unless you do a lot of Git or uh, do a lot of versioning using subversion or using Git. So that would make it easy. And if you're already using Git, that means the conflict of files, if people are working on a single file, different people, when they commit to that file and push a new update, the chances of conflict is even less. So why not just stick to one file, make our life easier. And in terms of self-debugging later on, in case you develop this kind of themes for your customer, and then the customer said, I want to try debugging this myself. Can you teach me how to do that? <laughs> Why not? Why not? So that, so, so, so the, the challenge would be less on telling them, oh, to go find the file under this folder and that folder and that file, and you see all this long list of PHP files. You don't have to have, to have that struggle anymore. Just tell them to go, oh, you have this one single PHP file of index.php. Open that and scroll to etc. etc. line number. That's it. So it's easy for you if you want to transfer your knowledge of those themes that you make. The use case here would be the normal, that means the kind of websites that we are building would be very suitable for the normal websites like content-based websites, news, blogs. Uh, if you're talking about CMSs, so in terms of making it or transforming it into a web app, that would be a different story. You may have to add some more PHP or use a lot more plugins than you're supposed to. I love plugins. I have nothing against plugins. I have nothing against page builders. But clearly, when you use more plugins and more page builders, the slower your website becomes. That's, that's a no-brainer. So the use case here is that we want a page, maybe just a one page where they look, they can go and scroll down. When the page would have uh, that normal jumbotron, that uh, a call to action section, then followed by some pages, static information, and then your posts, <coughs> and then at the bottom would be your footer. That, that's the kind of simple one-page material that you want to make as a website that's very suitable for marketing purposes and for collecting, uh, for collecting to promote your products in a one-page simple way. So you can reuse this and maybe try and make it load faster. Okay? You want to sell stuff, you want to show them really fast as well. So you need a website that is simple and fast. Hopefully this will work. This is the functions functions.php file I use for this theme. That's why I use a lot of. Uh, that's why I had I had to add one more PHP. The key here to make your theme simple is first use a lot of CDNs, the, the content delivery network. 
take advantage of those. Okay. That means if you have JavaScripts and CSS files, try not to host it together with your theme. Don't put it together. Instead, instead link it to the built-in uh, uh, the built-in scripts that WordPress has. You know WordPress has built-in scripts, yeah? Okay. You don't actually, for example, if you're using jQuery, specifically if you're using jQuery, you don't actually have to put the jQuery together in your themes. You know, when we create themes, we package a lot of things there, your images, your JS, JS your CSS file. Instead of doing that, why not just specify in the functions uh, file and then grab those things from the built-in uh, WordPress page, uh, the WordPress core, or link it to a CDN of your choice. For default scripts that are listed, uh, that are bundled together with WordPress, they actually listed it up in the WordPress developer, developer resource. So you can actually search for what kind of uh, things or scripts that you can run and you don't have to put it into uh, your thing. It's just the problem with this would be, for example, the, the, the theme that I built uses Bootstrap. Bootstrap has its own JS file on top of using jQuery files. So how do I insert those things into my theme when it's not built in into WordPress? That's where that's where the functions.php comes in. So you need to define and register that CSS or JS file into the function, functions file, register it and enqueue it into your theme. So this is the code that you use whenever there is a non-existing or not built into JS file in WordPress you use a register script. And to find what CDN hosts your, your, your JS file or CSS files, you just Google for it. it maybe just find a bootstrap, uh, bootstrap means CDN, and then you'll, you'll be, it'll give you a list. Other things or other CSS files or JS files that you may be concerned with would be fonts, if you have specialized or customized fonts, you need to use this. You need to put it into your functions file, register it before you queue it. You always need to queue it so that it does not conflict with any other plugins that uses the same JS files. It will not load multiple times. So everything, best practices, put it in your functions.php. Do not hard code it into your themes. This is how I do my Bootstrap and my jQuery. For Bootstrap, because it's not built into WordPress, that therefore I, just in case Bootstrap is being used as a name or being defined somewhere, I have to deregister it first in functions file. And um, it started to, uh, uh, my code starts with that, is at me, uh, not is at me, because I want to make sure that this CSS and JS file is only loaded for my site and not into administration or your dashboard. Otherwise, your dashboard, because certain CSS files has its own font, it will also override your dashboard fonts. So it looks a bit funny. So make sure to be registered and then re-register it back. What I want to highlight here is the, uh, the difference between the style and script. You notice that uh, I have two bootstrap files. One is .css and .js. With the .js file, when I register it, you will notice an extra line over here. Array falls through. 
me go back here. Okay. This is the register script uh, arguments. <coughs> this is how you define it. There are a few arguments here that I use specifically whenever I put in JS files. Specifically, the last one. The true uh, argument here refers to whether or not I want to put that script in the footer of my website or of my team. Why I use this is due to the page speed. Okay. It's recommended that any CSS files that you have, you must put it on top in your header, in your meta tags before your body of the HTML. CSS only. That is the, uh, the reason why certain sites load really slowly is because you have both CSS and JavaScript. The JavaScript takes a lot of time to load. So if you see any themes or plugins, take a look at how they call the JavaScript. Do they call it in the header or does it appear at the bottom? Ah, that's how one of the that's one of the ways for you to uh, speed up or optimize your website. Make sure your JS files all appear at the bottom, right before the closing of the body. So this is why again it's set as true. <coughs> and uh, jQuery, book the Bootstrap thing that I use uses uh, is dependent on jQuery. So uh, because jQuery is already built into the themes, so I don't have to worry about calling any CDN. I'm just going to use the built-in. Okay, this is, uh, this is one thing that you need to be careful of the jQuery because if you rely on JavaScript and then that JavaScript updates itself, but your certain plugins or certain themes that you use uses a lower version and an old and older version of jQuery that you need to be careful. And that is where again back to functions of PHP, you need to define the exact version of your JS code. Okay? That you also need to remember. So this is a very good page. That's why we cannot run I prefer not to run away from functions of because of this. Right, so that's about it. This is a demo page that I created. There might be some bugs here. I have not really debugged everything yet, but the idea is like this. This is based on the theme example in Bootstrap 4. So I just copy paste it, make it uh, change some of the codes inside. I'm not an Apple person, so I don't know how to view, view the search. But anyway, it's okay. So, but, but this is how it looks like. So when you click on the view, so when you click on view, it actually loads the same page again. But then it listed a single page. So what happens here when you look at the themes is that whatever code that you, if you're trying to change a, a, an existing theme and trying to practice, yeah, if you download a certain theme and you want to try to make it one page, you look at the, the, the codes and the pages that comes with it. So for example, the index page will stick like that and then when you go to the single.php file, there are certain parts that you can just copy paste and to your existing index.php and then make, make a, an if statement like I did. When you do that, you have to make an if statement for that as well. So you just, you, whenever it goes to, when it, whenever it calls a single page, check for whether it's a single page. If it calls for an archive, 
by month or by category, and all for each category, and so on and so forth. It's very simple actually. Then just do the, the necessary copy and paste and whatever codes that you want to put in. That's how you do a single page. Another way to make it even better is if you do a, I don't know what they call it, it's, it's not lazy load, but you just use Ajax. It's a very old term. Ajax means a synchronous JavaScript something, XML, and XML. What it does is actually asynchronously load your page when you click a more button. So instead of loading that page again as usual, you just use JavaScript like AngularJS or any other framework to load it continuously below the page. Or if you're using Bootstrap and they, they click on a single page, a single post, it actually opens a modular, uh, like a modular form on top of your listing. So there's a lot of ways, creative ways that you uh, you can do with a single page theme. It's just that it's based on your creativity. How far, how much, and how uh, how willing you are to go further to play around with just that single page. Okay? The, 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 the limitations, the restrictions that you put on that single page will push you into learning newer, better ways of delivering your content. So before I end, again, uh, the use case here, if you're planning on building an e-commerce site, it might work, it might not. But again, I always mention, it's the, your creativity is your limit. If you know a way to make an app, then uh, using a single page uh, theme, then why not? And the, uh, the potential for a single app would be that if you are ready to go into the trend of headless, headless CMS, have you heard of headless CMS before? The headless CMS, the concept is, uh, I, I put it briefly, you don't have to have your admin page or your dashboards or anything. You can customize it and just use WordPress APIs. Okay, the databases will be still WordPress and the content, uh, the, the scheme, data scheme will still be WordPress, but the way you call it will be using the APIs instead. So that's one of the ways you can play around so that you can build a mobile app version of your website at the end. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I will be